Hi, welcome to a new Godot game development series. A lot of you have been requesting another full game tutorial, so I've chosen to make a top-down tank game. I'm building this as we go, so while I have some idea of what the final result will be, the game could go in many different directions. I know we will cover tile maps, we'll cover pathfinding and AI, we may even get into things like multiplayer. Uh, we'll have to see where it goes. In this first part, we're going to discuss the project setup, and we're going to make the player tank. So we're going to start with a little bit of project settings to get everything ready to go. In the rendering quality, we're going to turn Use Pixel Snap on. This is a 2D setting that you want to use when you're using pixel art, uh, because what it does is it snaps the rendering of the pixels to the pixel grid. Um, so when something's moving and you have something, you know, a position that's a fractional pixel, pixel amount, this will uh, prevent that jitter that happens sometimes during movement. And uh, we're also going to go down to the window display and we're going to set the stretch mode to 2D and we're going to set the aspect to keep. And we'll get into a little more later once we get the game working how that affects resizing the game window. Now we're also going to need some inputs so I've gone ahead and add, added some input actions here in the input map for turn right and turn left, forward and back, and the mouse click. And so those are going to be the controls for our tank. WASD is going to be to control the movement, and the mouse is going to control aim and fire of the tank's turret. Now another thing I want to do before I drop all of my assets into the project folder, this is just going to save me some time, is change the default import settings for textures. By default, I'll bring this icon out here just so you can see this. By default, Godot has filtering on, which is what's making this little blurry effect when you zoom in on the pixels. And we don't want that for our pixel art. That's going to make things look not as good. So we're going to make sure we've selected a PNG file, and we're going to go over to import. And it's going to show us our texture import settings. And one of them is filter. So we want to turn that off. And if you click reimport, you can see now, no matter how much I zoom in, the individual pixels remain looking exactly the same. And what we can also do is click here and say, set this as the default for texture. So that way, any texture that it imports will have these settings automatically, and we won't have to go and, and change them after we've already imported them. All right, so now I've dropped my assets folder in here and it's imported all of the textures and we are ready to get started. Now for this project, we're using another Kenny art pack. This time we're using the top down tanks, which is a nice art pack with lots of tanks and accessories and things that are going to work great for getting this game going. And it has tanks of different colors. It's got some big boss tanks, lots of features. You can get this at Kenny's website, kenny.nl, and it'll also be in the download uh, in the comments below. Now, one thing I have changed from the original art pack is if you open up the texture atlas in the art pack, this or is oriented so that all the tanks are facing downwards. And since in Godot, zero degree orientation means pointing to the right, that would just mean that uh, every asset you use out of here, you would have to rotate the sprite 90 degrees to align it properly. So instead, I have rotated the entire atlas, and I've called it underscore rotated here. So you can get that in my download, or if you download it directly from Kenny, uh, you'll have to open that up in an art program and rotate it uh, if you don't want to rotate every sprite individually. All right, let's start making a tank. Now this game's going to have many different tanks in it. It's going to have uh, the player controlled tank. It's going to have the enemy tanks. Uh, maybe it has more than one player controlled tank if down the road we decide to try out some multiplayer in this project. Uh, it might have those boss tanks. They're all going to have similar properties and they're going to have different properties. And so one thing we can do is try and plan ahead a little bit. Usually it's not a great idea to over design at the beginning. So I'm not going to try and think this out too far, we can always go back and change things if um, if it changes later. But we're going to make a generic tank scene, 
And then we're going to inherit from that scene to make the player tank, which has keyboard controls, or to make the enemy tank, which has AI controls. But they're going to have their similar features grouped together in this tank scene. So we're going to start with a kinematic body uh, 2D. And that's going to be the tank's root node. And so that's going to need a few different nodes underneath it. It's going to need a sprite. It's going to need a collision shape 2D. It's going to need actually another sprite because what I'm going to do is have one of these be the body and one is going to be the turret. And so these two parts will move separately. I want the tank to be able to aim in a different direction than it's moving. Uh, the turret is going to need to have a position 2D placed at the end of it to mark the exit of the muzzle so we know where to spawn bullets when the tank fires. Uh, and then last we're going to add a timer that's going to be that's going to time it's going to be basically be the cooldown of the gun that will control how fast this tank can shoot. And so each tank will be able to have that configured differently, but they're all going to need to have these properties. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to make a folder called tanks so that we're going to put all the tank related scenes underneath this folder. And that's all we need to do. We don't need to add any actual textures to this because the individual inherited ones will have that. So let's start one of those. We're going to click on scene, new inherited scene, and we're going to inherit from tank. And I'm going to name this player and save it. And it's going to go in the same folder because it's the player tank. All right, let's give this player tank an appearance. So on the body sprite, I'm going to drag the texture over into here drop that in the texture and now of course we have the whole giant texture so we're going to click region and we're going to go and select the portion of the texture that we want to use for our tank. Now notice we do have some tanks in this sprite sheet that have the turrets already attached. We don't want those because then we won't be able to rotate them freely. And so for this tank I think I'm going to choose the green one. So now I need to select this. Now you have a couple of the different options of how to use this texture region tool. Up here in snap mode, there is an option called auto slice. Now auto slice, unfortunately, does not always work with most texture atlases. In fact, it won't work with this one. Sometimes it can slice things up automatically and it's useful. Uh, instead, I'm gonna set this to pixel snap. Uh, by the way, you can use grid snap if you're if you're Atlas is laid out into a regular grid, but you, as you can see, all these textures are packed in really tight, so they're not evenly spaced. But we're going to choose pixel snap, so we make sure we don't um, select in between some pixels. And if you zoom in, you can adjust the size of this and make sure you don't go over the edge and grab, you know, like part of the adjacent image. We don't want that. Just want the tank. All right, if we close that, now we have our tank. I'll zoom in here some. Now we have our tank's body. And then we're going to do the same thing for the turret. We're going to use the, the same texture and turn region on. And this time we're going to go and select one of the gun images. I'm going to use this one up here, the green, to match my tank's body. Make sure I have all the pixels selected. Okay, so there's my turret. Now one issue we're going to have with this is if I switch to rotate mode up here, I'll use this button, which is you can press E as the shortcut, but this puts you in rotate mode. And if I rotate that sprite, you see it rotates around its center. And that doesn't quite look like what we want. So what we're going to do is on the turret, we're going to set its offset. I'm going to offset it about, uh, let's see, 20. Yeah, 20 pixels is pretty good because now when it rotates, it will rotate around that pivot point. And that looks much better. Okay. And then the same thing with the muzzle. We need to move the muzzle's position uh, 50, uh, maybe 50, 55 pixels there so that it's at the tip of the gun. So now when the gun rotates, you see the 
muzzle marker rotates with it. So our spawn point for our bullets will always be at the tip of the turret. All right, save that. Let's click uh, our nice don't let the object's children be selectable button because we don't want to accidentally be dragging our things away. Um, if you don't do this, what will happen is you can you can go and when you're in move mode, you go and grab things and you, oops, you drag that away. Oh, now things are all offset. The kinematic body is still here, but the one sprite's over here, one sprite's over there. This gets to be a mess. So we do that and it will only let you grab the root node when you grab things. You can't grab individual ones. It's a good habit to get in. And then finally, we need to add a collision shape. I'm going to use a rectangle shape 2D. And we'll go in and size this to fit just maybe to the edge of the treads, but not quite all the way over them. We'll see how that looks when we start actually colliding with obstacles. That'll be the test to see exactly how we want to tweak this. All right, and our player tank is now designed. Now we need to add a script to it and start controlling it. All right, so now it's time to start adding some scripts. And we're going to do the scripts the same way. We're going to create a common script that has all the code that every tank is going to need. And then we're going to add, extend that for each individual tank. So if we go over to the script, tab, we're going to hit new, and we're going to make this inherit from kinematic body. Uh, we're going to call it tank.gd. Uh, we're going to put it in the tanks folder. And we're going to use the empty template because I don't like all that those comments. All right, so this is tank.gd, and it's here in the tanks folder with the other tank scenes. And this is going to have all the stuff that we're going to have in common. So we're going to add um, we're going to add a few things here. Let's see. I'm going to add some signals for updating UI. So when the health of the tank changes or when the tank dies, uh, we're going to export a few things like uh, the bullet. So we can attach a different bullet to each individual tank if we want to. We're going to attach a we're going to attach export a speed variable. They're all going to have some movement speed. Uh, we're going to have a rotation speed. That's going to be how fast the turret rotates. Or maybe we'll call this. No, this is how fast, this is going to be how fast the tank itself rotates. Like when it makes, you know, when it turns to try and point in another direction, it's going to be its rotation speed. We're going to, uh, we're going to have a variable for the fire, uh, the gun cooldown uh, that we can set. We're going to, and we're going to export a health that's going to be, how much armor the hang ta has, tank has, how many hits it can take. All right, and then the other things we need, we're going to need a velocity vector. We're going to need a can shoot flag so we can make the cooldown work and uh, alive so that we can mark the tank dead and have it maybe do a death animation, explosion, that kind of thing. Um, in the ready, we're just going to take the gun timer and set its wait time equal to the, uh, the gun cooldown that we chose. We're going to have a function called control, and that's going to be something that will call every frame that will let you input the controls to the tank. Now in the player tank, that will be the keyboard controls, but in the AI tank, that will be the AI code, you know, whatever makes it move and decide how it's going to operate. So if we're not alive, we're going to skip this, right? So it shouldn't do that stuff. 
then we'll call control and then we'll move and slide using the velocity. All right, so there's a very generic tank controller. And oh, and I think maybe we're probably going to want to pass delta to control as well so it can use that in its calculations. Yeah. All right, so that's our generic tank script and we'll we'll extend this more when we have other functions that we want to add to all of the tanks. But now our player tank is going to need its own script that's going to inherit using the inherits functionality we're going to choose tank.gd and now player.gd is going to extend that so now we have right if I hit save when you click on the player you'll see we have all of the exported variables already available right we'll set the speed to like 200 rotation speed to 1 gun cooldown 0 0.4 health 100. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we want to adjust those later. So in this script for the player is where we want to just basically all we got to change is the control. Right? We're going to override the control function and have it do its own thing for the player. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to make the, sure the turret is always pointing at the mouse. So we're going to say turret look at get global mouse position. And then the other controls we're going to need to do are the left, right, forward, and back. And for the rotation, we're going to have a variable, just a temporary one here that we can add or subtract one to get the direction of the rotation. So that we need to set that equal to zero. And then what we're going to do is check the inputs. So if input is action, oh, not just pressed, is action pressed, uh, turn right. So if we turn right, we want to take that rotation direction and we want to add one to it. And then we can actually just copy and paste this. And if we did left instead, then our rotation direction should get subtracted by one. Then we can set the actual rotation of the body by adding the rotation speed times that direction times delta. And then the other one is the velocity. So the velocity we're going to set to zero and then alter if we have any input. So for this one, we want to say if uh, is action pressed, UI, oops, sorry, not UI, forward. Forward is what we called the action. So we're going to change our velocity and make it equal to a vector of the speed. So we want to be going at whatever our speed is rotated by whatever our rotation is. So we want to go forward in the direction that we are pointing. So if I copy that and paste that, we can also do that for back. And back, I'm going to make it negative. I'm also going to make it half the speed. So we don't go forward. We go, we go forward faster than we go backwards. So let's go ahead and try this out. So there's my tank, and we can see I am driving around. And the mouse turret's following the mouse wherever it points. And then WASD are allowing me to rotate the tank, move forward, move backwards. All right, very nice.